so boring. Everything was about religion. What did you think when you decided to go to an abbey? Do not pay for the changing of the guard ceremony. Why are you paying for the changing of the guard ceremony? It's free to watch. I don't... Worst tourist attraction in London? Have you been to like Shrek 4D? Hey guys, welcome back to the Girl Gun London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm an American who's lived in the UK for almost 10 years, and today I am responding to one-star TripAdvisor reviews of some of London's most popular attractions. So before I get onto this video, I just want to say I very much appreciated all of the kind comments that you left on my video on the hate comments I get on YouTube. I really appreciate you all being here and feel definitely a pep in my step. It could also be the sunshine, but I definitely feel supported and uplifted by all of you who enjoy my content. I also just want to say if you are interested in helping out, all you have to do is make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. This tells YouTube that I'm doing a good job and also helps other people see the videos. It also helps you make sure that you are fed the videos by YouTube because if you're not subscribed, you're not always going to be shown every single video. And we've got some good ones coming up. But for today, I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to see what hate comments uh, attractions in London got? Because I am sure that there are people out there who will find something to fault in everything. And I definitely found some doozies. So uh, buckle up. I chose London attractions that I think are pretty much, okay, nothing can be objectively great. That's not how objectivity works in that sense. But I would say these are London attractions that are almost universally loved. I didn't pick any attractions that I feel like, uh, maybe they're kind of right. This isn't worth it. These are definitely attractions that I feel are pretty much five-star attractions. So let's see what the one-star reviews had to say. Okay, the first ones are about Big Ben. Obviously an iconic, you know, London landmark, London attraction to take pictures of, to walk by. Um, pretty beautiful and I think renowned for how nice it looks. And people had this to say. Ben is a boring name. Who went to all these great lengths to build this ginormous clock only to go and name it Ben? Personally, I think this clock should have been a female named Ginormous Georgia. That's not the worst idea I've ever heard. I feel like that's a funny one-star comment. I mean, not helpful whatsoever. Um, but, you know, if anybody knows why it's named Ben, definitely comment below. Next one. The place has architecture. Yeah, I would agree with that so far. That is about it. Okay, yes. Um, the locals treat it as an eyesore. Only tourists seem to like it. I'm not really sure. Okay, here's two things we're going to talk about. Number one, I don't think it's true that locals see it as an eyesore. I've never heard any Londoner express their disinterest in Big Ben or they wish it weren't there or anything like that. So that doesn't quite make sense to me. Also, what do you mean by locals? Because the area where Big Ben is in, in Westminster, isn't a huge residential area. It's very, um, there's obviously the Houses of Parliament, and you've got some work going on in there, but it's also like government office buildings, tourist attractions and things like that. So do the locals of Westminster, what few of them there are, really um, hate Big Ben? I don't think so. Okay, we've moved on to the British Museum. Someone says, one star, don't bother. Way too crowded in the summer. You know what, that I feel like I can get on board with. Definitely in July and August, London is heaving with people. And so I could see in the summer, the British Museum is crowded. Not enough variety. There are artifacts from all over the world, all different types. So I don't agree with that. Mostly ancient artifacts, not my cup of tea. Why did you go to a museum of ancient artifacts if they're not your cup of tea, only to then post on TripAdvisor that it is exactly as described? They charge for certain exhibits, which is so wrong. Sorry I wasted my time. The British Museum does charge for specific exhibitions. However, I've never paid for an exhibition at the British Museum. These are like temporary um, paid curated exhibitions. The rest of the museum is completely free, donation advised, but 
basically it's free um, and there is so much to see that you couldn't even possibly see all the free stuff so don't agree with that review okay another British Museum one what's the point stunning ceiling and architecture okay agree with you there the more than mediocre eating facilities and lack of seating is hard to comprehend against this stunning building I wouldn't say that the British Museum has amazing eating facilities. It has a cafe and it also has a restaurant that I've had afternoon tea in, which is worth it if you are planning on going to the British Museum anyway and don't have time to go elsewhere. But yeah, it's not like the best of the best food. That being said, whoever went to a museum for the sole purpose of eating. I feel like you're missing the point of what you're actually there for. Okay, another one about the British Museum. Shame. Of course you have to visit the museum, yes, but be prepared to get very, very angry. Very, very angry. Did you hear that? The place is a huge restaurant. What? The person before just said there was nowhere to eat. The place is a huge restaurant with gift shops in the middle. No respect for the marvels that are there. I would disagree with this. The main lobby area does have the eating facilities and the gift shop and you basically go out to the wings of the museum as well as um, up the staircase to see the exhibits. But I feel like that's someone who literally just went into the lobby and didn't go any further. No order, no security. They just asked us if we were carrying weapons. We said no, of course. Okay, I'm glad they asked at least. No air conditioning. Yes, welcome to the UK. People are running up and down with no plan. Do something for heaven's sake. Heaven's shake, she says, or he says. Um, I'm not sure where people are running up and down in the museum, up and down, maybe up and down the different levels with no plan. Why didn't you get a map? Do something for heaven's sake, shake. I don't understand what, what this person wants to happen in the British Museum. I find it pretty orderly, pretty organized, like most museums in London, so I'm gonna also disagree with this one. Okay, now we move on to Buckingham Palace, which everyone in the world knows is home to the Queen when she is in London. I have heard that she doesn't actually like Buckingham Palace that much and prefers to be elsewhere, so maybe she would agree with these comments that I'm about to read, but we'll see what they have to say. First one. Overrated Council House. Hampton Court is far better and a much better historic example. This knackered old council house would be better turned into affordable housing. Okay, clearly this is not a serious comment. They seriously hate Buckingham Palace. If you're not from the UK, council housing slash affordable housing is basically low cost housing that the council would provide um, for someone in times of need. And clearly Buckingham Palace does not look like affordable housing that you'd find in just a regular British residential area. That being said, I did have a friend one time who, when we got to the Buckingham Pal when we got to Buckingham Palace and stood in front of it, he said it looked like a New York library. So I do agree in some sense that it's not necessarily as grand as some people are expecting. And Hampton Court Palace is really nice, but obviously I don't think it deserves a one star. Next one. What a waste of time. I do not understand the obsession with the royal family and of paying for the work to be done on the palace. The obsession with the royal family is a very interesting comment that I'll go to in other videos because I can tell you that Americans are way more obsessed with the royal family than actual British people are in my experience. The royal family receive a small percent of money from the taxpayer and the queen wants more money to do up the palace. Just wow. I just love that this comes across as like, the queen is wanting to like get some new windows and the country doesn't want her to, but it's like she's on a home design show where they're like, we need to find room in the budget for this. And then the host is like, we're over budget already. Is this making sense? It's like, a, it reads like a home design show. Um, do not pay for the changing of the guard ceremony. Why are you paying for the changing of the guard ceremony? It's free to watch. It is a lot of waiting about and is very busy. I mean, one of the most iconic ceremonies that happens almost daily in London is busy. Yes, I would agree. Don't always see very much due to how busy it is. Yes, you should do your research and go early for a good spot to watch. I'm still hung up on the fact that they said they paid because I'm not sure how you pay for the changing of the guard ceremony. Save your hard earned money and do something more exciting than this. Well, so far we've knocked off the British Museum 
and seeing Big Ben, so let's see if we can find something more interesting in the other comments. Okay, this comment is about Churchill War Rooms, which I think is one of the best things to do in London that a lot of people actually miss because it's literally underground and not as talked about as some of the more popular things. I mean, it is super popular, but not as much as like the British Museum or things like that. It is a really interesting look at World War II in London and at where Churchill and other top-ranking British officials were stationed during the war. And obviously this was an underground bunker area so that people, um, particularly the enemies, didn't know uh, where they were or where the war rooms were located. Okay, so this comment says, save your money. Overpriced tour of some underground war rooms. Overpriced, it can be pricey, but I, I don't think it's overpriced i think it's just on the borderline but i'll give them that overpriced tour of some underground war rooms i like how they just say some underground war rooms like these random ones they stumbled across with the equipment and communications of the time no other interest okay yes so underground war rooms outfitted with the equipment and communication of the times is exactly how I would describe the Churchill war rooms and exactly how they present themselves to visitors. So that is all that it's there. There is no aquarium. There's not a zoo. There's not a roller coaster. It is underground war rooms outfitted with the equipment from the time plus a museum actually. But anyway, okay. This one is about Hyde Park. Empty space. Apart from some fine trees, there's nothing to see here. A, that's false. There are statues, there are fountains, there are really nice benches, um, there are some play areas, but also what else are you expecting of a park apart from some fine trees? I think that's the point. Okay, next comment about Hyde Park. What a disappointment. We literally lost half a day in this park looking for the statue of Peter Pan that disappointed the expectations of our daughter, a lover of his adventures, and then looking for the play area that actually is nothing. Okay, the Peter Pan statue is definitely pretty small. How you lose a half a day there, I'm not sure. Hyde Park is big, but it's not that big that you would be spending half a day looking for the Peter Pan statue. Also, there are maps all over if you go to the outskirts of the park and in the interior. Um, I will agree, Peter Pan statue, meh, but the rest of the comment is wrong. They also say, there is so much green, but nothing more that cannot be found anywhere. Again, Hyde Park is a big, relatively empty space of green, fine looking trees. I think that is exactly what I'm looking for in a park and why loads of people love Hyde Park because it is so spacious in the center of London and it's got some great scenery and uh, it does have statues and things to see. Not all are as underwhelming as the Peter Pan statue, but there's definitely things to walk around and look at. Okay, this one is about the National Gallery, which you'll find right above Trafalgar Square, and it is a huge collection of paintings uh, from really big names from all over the world. It is one of the top art galleries in the UK and in Europe, so let's see what people have to say. Boring. Not a place for children. We went on a school tour thinking they may do something interactive, but all they got was an hour of talking to about paintings. Yes, that is the point. Even the adults were bored. The children asked when they were leaving, was that it, and how bored they were. If you take children to an art museum, the point is to be talked to about the paintings, and as the adults, you should probably try and encourage some level of interest in these amazing paintings from all over the world and not give in to the fact that you are also bored. We went outside to go to the station and found some buskers who were dancing that became their highlight. Oh, the people outside of the, oh my God. Okay, next comment titled paintings. Okay, if you like paintings, I thought it was boring. So helpful, thank you very much. Okay, next comment, big disappointment. Made my skin crawl, a horrible atmosphere. What a waste of the country's money generally showing off a lot of what only the historic rich could afford by artists who had great painting talent. We'll agree on that. But many must have had twisted minds. Oh, she found some abstract art, I'm sure. 
I couldn't wait to get out of there. So much for seeking cultural engagement. I'm still not sure what was so uh, horrible to make their skin crawl to really react to that. I definitely have never felt this when going into the National Gallery. I usually walk in and think, oh my god, look at all these amazing paintings and these names that I've actually heard of, not being an art fanatic. Um, so she must have gone into some like weird side room and something weird must have happened there. Now we're going on to St. Paul's Cathedral. One star, trash. Ugly chairs everywhere, unkempt, expensive, rip off. And then they repeat this in their comment. Really overpriced venue. Yeah, it is on the pricier side, but again, I would still say worth it. It's just been standing there collecting dust. Yes, that is what most people love about a historic venue. I wonder where the millions of admission fees go. Don't waste your time. Okay, interesting. I mean, St. Paul's Cathedral is free if you are going there to worship. There are free like services and stuff. If you're going as a tourist, you don't just go into the main cathedral. There are plenty of exhibits and it's much more like a museum as you go around. So when people say like, why do they charge to go into a cathedral? There's a lot more to it and you can go in if you just want to see the cathedral and worship there. But if you do want to see the visitor exhibits that money and time have gone into creating and preserving, then I do understand why they charge. Next comment. Pay to pray. Okay, this is what I was just talking about. We think it's so wrong when a place of worship charges one if one wanted to pray. Very wrong. I'm always inspired to pray when I walk into a church. You don't... You pay... If you're going to see it as a visitor, if you are there to pray or there to worship, you can go to the services, which are free, and you can do that there. So you're not paying to pray, you're paying to go into the tourist exhibits. If you wanna pray, it's free. The next comment is about the Tower of London, which in my group of travelers interested in visiting the UK, um, it is consistently one of the highest rated. Everybody absolutely loves their time there, and I would 100% any visitor in London visit the Tower of London, but someone else has a different opinion. They say, absolutely atrocious and boring. Atrocious is a strong word, don't you think? Worst tourist attraction in London, followed by the London Eye. Oh, <laughs> I don't, worst tourist attraction in London? Have you been to like Shrek 4D? It's so boring. And the torture area is not that exciting either. <laughs> I mean, I don't, yeah, the torture area. Uh, how do I put this? I find the torture area plenty exciting, okay? Um, because it's so full of tourists, yes, you should expect that in London, and because of the statues, equipment, and furniture they've added, it's given an even more of a touristic vibe. I don't necessarily agree. It feels com it feels pretty authentic and historic to me. There are plenty of attractions in London where I'm like, definitely, you don't need to go to London Dungeons, for instance. That is completely touristy, not historic at all. I've been to the Tower of London countless times. I've never thought that it is too touristy. Yes, there are tourists there who are visiting, but that's the only thing that makes it touristy. Okay, the next comment is about the Victoria and Albert Museum, and they say, boring. The contents were not pleasing on the eye. Lovely building, but a waste of space inside. I mean, this is a strong thing to say about one of the like most amazing museums in the UK. Uh, it's more for the ladies, but for the average man, boring. I feel like men are perfectly capable of enjoying a beautiful museum. Thank you very much. Okay, we're gonna finish off with a couple comments about Westminster Abbey, which um, if you are familiar at all with London is in Westminster, right across the road from Big Ben. And this is very popular for being the place of some royal weddings and royal um, engagements and things like that. And also a ton of people from the UK, uh, famous people or uh, historic people are buried here and visitors can visit Westminster Abbey and see all of this history and all of this religious history. Okay, first comment. Boring. <laughs> 
I don't know. I just feel like if you're visiting London, like any of these attractions that we've talked about and you're someone commenting boring, I think the boring person is probably you. So boring. Everything was about religion. What did you think when you decided to go to an abbey? T too old. No, stop. This has got to be a joke comment. Too, too old and too dull. Full of old people. Do they mean like old people visiting or the people in the ground? Because it is full of old people in the ground, but I haven't necessarily noticed an age difference when it comes to the visitors. The weather outside was awful too. You know, it probably was considering they wrote this in October in London. That's fully possible. Not sure how you can rate Westminster Abbey based on that, but okay. Okay, the final comment. Don't bother, it says. Wanna pay 23 pounds a head and then no photography? This is the place. Well, it depends. Am I paying 23 pounds to take pictures or am I paying 23 pounds to explore uh, one of London's most historic and beautiful attractions? Take your pictures from the outside, good advice. Avoid the gift shop. Not good advice, I like the gift shop at Westminster Abbey. And move on to something else. They are happy to take your money and provide a headset, but even the Louvre lets you photograph Mona Lisa, albeit with club bouncers shouting at you the whole time. I mean, that doesn't sound pleasant. I don't understand why we're comparing this to the Louvre. Also, completely different things. Anyways, not happy at all with the Abbey experience. This sounds like it was written by an American, and I say that with love as an American. I don't, I, I don't even know what to say about people. The thing is, the Westminster Abbey does not allow photography inside uh, around some of uh, the country's most like precious and fragile relics. Okay, sorry, that is a problem. Um, but the point is not just to take pictures that you will never ever look at again or that you will make people when you go home sit through who don't want to sit through your pictures. The point is to actually be there and experience the place. So yeah, the fact that photography isn't allowed really one star. Um, I would disagree with this person. I think Westminster Abbey is definitely worth a stop on your trip. Okay, so that brings me to the end of my video. I hope you guys enjoyed and are also similarly dying a little bit on the inside, reading these comments and seeing what people have to say. Obviously, all of these attractions, you know, you've got to pick some, you can compare them. And I do agree on the whole that sometimes they do feel expensive just because when you're a visitor, you want to do as much as possible and it can add up when you're paying 25 pounds per person for attractions like the Tower of London and the London Eye and St. Paul's Cathedral and all that stuff. But I definitely disagree on the whole with all of these one-star comments. Leave a comment below and tell me your thoughts on any of these attractions and also give me some suggestions on video ideas that you'd like for me to do. I'd be happy to hear them, but for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.